Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's play some Imperator Rome. Um, Paradox was very kind enough to grant me early access to Imperator Rome, and so we're going to be jumping on in. We're going to be doing a few different campaigns. As you can probably tell from the thumbnail and the title of this video, we're going to be playing as Armenia. Sorry, guys. Let me turn down this, uh, this master just a, just a bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump on into the uh, to the single player here. Let's go to a new game. I will try and talk about as much as I can um, about the game. Try and kind of elaborate. I've had um, I would say probably about maybe ten hours now of just kind of practice, and um, I'm not like amazing at the game. You know, it's it's there's a lot of of moving pieces going on, but uh, I, I am excited for for this game. And. Um, here we are in the year uh, 304 BCE, the 1st of October, and I asked you guys on a poll, what what countries would you like to see for Imperator Rome? And some of the big some of the big answers I got was Carthage, um, Armenia. I actually originally intended to do a campaign as Phrygia. Um, we'll probably do some other stuff here in Italy, but a lot of people want to see Armenia. And actually, I, I do really think it is a good um, it's a good country to play as here in this in this region because it's big. And it's, it's populated, but it's, you know, it's not a Phrygia, it's not a Seleucid Empire, it's not an Egypt. You know, but at the same time, it is larger than something like Macedon, right? It's something larger than Rome. And so, it actually is a really good country to just kind of uh, learn the ropes, I think. And we're going to jump on in and see how it all goes. I've never played as Armenia. I don't really know too much about, like, about you know, its, its population or anything like that. Um, so, we'll, we'll kind of explore and we'll, we'll talk about it. <clears throat> So, we are Armenia. We are, apparently we're a major power. Um, that's interesting. We can guarantee other countries, threat war, support rebels, have alliances, capital import routes, diplomatic relations, diplomatic range, government bonus multipliers. Um, we have Persian traditions. Um, let's see, the Persian traditions cover the tactics of the peoples of the Scythian steppe and satellites of the former Achaemenid Empire. Life on and around the steppe has forged these peoples into exquisite horsemen. Alright, we get horse archers. We can unlock the uh, cavalry skirmish ability, raise levies, military con uh, colonies ability. We focus on strong horse archers. We have good heavy infantry and light cavalry. As you know, we're dealing with a lot of Hellenistic powers over here. So they deal a lot with heavy cavalry. You know, um, they have heavy uh, phalanx, you know, pikemen infantry. You know, they use some archers. They use some, you know, some slingers, um, some light infantry, Hesaspis on the flanks of their armies. They use a lot of light cavalry as well, Hippias, that sort of thing for scouting forces. You know, whereas we, we are more, um, you know, we have horse archers and such. Armenia is very mountainous, and so, you know, moving around quickly on horseback and firing from horseback and such is really important for our armies, so it should be kind of interesting. Uh, we are an autocratic monarchy. Let's see, we are Zoroastrian, okay? So our, our main religion is Zoroastrian. It's definitely different than the uh, the Hellenistic religion that exists for most of the powers around here. Not all of them, but, but most of them. And then we are uh, Armenian culture, which is in the Persian culture group. Our ruler is Orontes Sorontes the Third. He's uh, 31 years old. He he's got four martial. Uh, let's see, five. Actually, if, forget. If I think it's it's religious power, martial power, and then I believe it's um, is it diplomatic and civic? Not sure. Let's see, can we check? Finesse. That's what they call it. Charisma, martial, and zeal. Yeah. So he's got four martial, five finesse. Uh, Five charisma and then six zeal. Okay. And any what's his traits? He's apparently unnoticeable and he wants to have a son. Okay. Alright, cool. Let's take a look at the population here. Um we have wow, we have 126 cities. Holy crap. So we have 126 cities. Uh 717 pops. We have mostly Caldic Armenians. 493 of those guys. Apparently we have 108. Zoroastrian Armenians. So our ruler is Zoroastrian, but most of most of our population is actually Caldic. That's kind of cool. And then we have a couple of sibling Pontics, um, Caldic Pontics. Okay, cool. And then we have uh, 57 citizens, 189 freemen, 330 tribesmen, which is quite a bit, and 141 slaves. So it seems like our empire is a little bit heavy on on tribesmen and slaves, and less on on citizens. And citizens is where you get a lot of uh, tax income from. You know, a lot of research. Then the Freeman as well, you get a lot of tax from. So obviously we're going to play it on Iron Man mode. Let's keep it at normal difficulty for now. Um, I'm still not entirely certain if this game is, you know, necessarily difficult. Just because I haven't had that much time with it. 
Um, you know, it ebbs and flows as far as difficulty is concerned. Sometimes you'll face, you know, difficult situations, and then other times it's actually fairly easy. So, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and jump on in, and we'll jump on in as our menu. Okay. So, we're in the year uh, 450 AUC, which if you hover over here, you actually, it'll show you it's 30, 304 BC. Um, let's take a look here at some of our provinces. So, <clears throat> we got quite a few of these. Wow, holy crap. So, for, the thing is, is for each one of your provinces, you have to have a governor. And there's like different policies and such for, for each of these provinces. We have 100% loyalty in all of them, so that's good. Um, terrain map mode, we have, let's see. We can actually go over here to the political map mode and kind of gives us an idea of, of what's passable, what's not passable. A lot of the impassable terrain is kind of covered in um, in in fog here, and you know, the, the kind of a fog of war. So we have a lot of open area over here, right? We border Medea at Tropatine over here. We've got a lot of open territory here. We, you know, we have some mountain passes here. Less, it's it's less less open, and. Do we have any diplomatic relations? We actually don't. We don't have, we don't have any diplomatic relations. Let's take a look here at the uh, the countries of Albania and Iberia. Okay, so Albania and Iberia, these kingdoms over here, do not also have any diplomatic relations. Let's take a look at the Frisians. So Frisia has Cappadocia as a tributary or a feudatory. Um, let's see, Pavlonia and Pontus are unaligned, as is Trapezus. Okay. Uh, let's see, Medea and Tropatine, do you have, um, do you have anything going on over there? No, not really. He's got no allies or anything. Let's see, Idea Bean is a, yeah, is a tributary to, uh, the Solicit Empire. And the Solicit Empire obviously rules over quite a bit of territory. It's kind of scary. Let's go and go through, um, everything up here in the top bar. Uh, let's see, we have 281 gold. We have 70,000 min power. We're gonna need to probably split this army, I think. All you gotta do is press the H hotkey to, to split these forces. Just make sure we're not taking attrition here. Uh, we have a bad research ratio. So we have a very large population, 717 people, but we only have 151 research output from our citizens. Citizens are the ones that have, um, or, or that generate research points. And so you need to have kind of a good balance of manpower, tax, and research points coming into your country or else you fall behind in one of those areas. So we definitely need more citizens. That much is true. We have some unused trade routes and capital, so we want to import certain goods into Armenia, and doing so generates income, whether you export goods or, you know, import goods and that sort of thing. I'm thinking, um, well, first off, what, what goods do we need? Um, let's take a look here. Where's my trade? Okay, so we don't have, for now, it seems we don't have any sort of surplus anywhere. Okay. Let's see. Can we build... First off, we want to go over here to the macro builder. Let's go over here to recruit cohorts. Let's find out. Can we build heavy inventory? We can. We can build heavy inventory over here in this province because we have the, the trade good of uh, iron. When you have iron, you can build heavy inventory. Uh, you need horses, obviously, to build, say, you know, horse archers and that sort of thing. Horse archers. We can also produce horse archers. Can we produce... Let's take a look. Can we produce light cavalry? We can produce light cavalry in all these provinces, so apparently we have a lot of horses available here. Can we produce camels? Nope. What, chariots? Nope. Archers? Yes. And then can we produce cataphracts, which are heavy cavalry? Uh, yes, we can. So we don't necessarily need, for the most part, we don't exactly need, um, you know, iron for, like, say, heavy inventory. Uh, we don't exactly need horses for anything. So perhaps we want to focus on importing other goods that would make us either money or increase our... You know, like our, our population growth, that sort of thing, because the faster you, you grow pops, you know, the better off you're going to be <clears throat> as far as, like, wealth and manpower and taxes and such. So we don't want to import iron. Don't even need to import necessarily horses. Uh, we don't even need to import wood, because we don't have any sea connections. Um, grain gives us the most local population growth. Fish and livestock help out. Could do... Could get some wine. Could get some wine for some happiness. Olives could do that. Let's see. Stone would give us local fort defense. Uh, leather would give us cohort or recruit speed. Vegetable supply limit. Wild game gives us local tribesmen output. We do have a lot of local tribesmen. That's not that's not a bad idea. Let's see. Earthenware. Ooh. Research points plus 5% for earthenware. That would be pretty smart. Uh, cloth as well. Local tax plus 10%. You know, I think that earthenware. I think I like that. We can import it. 
from our province, the Persian major power of Armenia. We can import it from Armenia Minor, or Minor. We could actually import it for, for over here. So we'll do that. All right, good stuff. Let's find out what else we need. Um, you know, I'm leaning towards this cloth. Local tax is actually probably a pretty good idea. So let's grab that. We can import it from the regional power of Babylonia. Where is that dude anyway? Is it, we can import it from this guy, or we can get it from the regional uh, power of Pontus, which is this guy. I don't actually know if we'll be attacking Pontus or Pavlonia necessarily in the early game. Um, just because he's on my border, I'll go ahead and import it from Pontus. And I think the last thing we're going to import here, we can actually import even more cloth, which is kind of interesting. I think grain, maybe just for some population growth. We can get it from uh, the Persian regional power of Atropatine. Hmm. You know, is that a good idea? I kind of do want to attack Atropatine. Then again, I think we might piss off the Seleucids if we do that. So maybe I'll leave it alone for now. Maybe we will trade with him. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. All right. Let's take a look here. So we have a couple of scorned families. These are all the families in our in our realm. You know, powerful elite families, that sort of thing. We have the uh, the Ramantids, the Arathids, the, the, the Ariathids, the Minids, the... The Gabonids, the Godrabasids, the Deacids, the Arids, and the Sassanids. Ooh, we have the progressors of the Sassanids here. That's kind of cool. Um, scorn families, you know, unless total income... All, a family will be scorned unless the total income of its members receives some jobs and offices at least 2% of their national income. Um, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Scorn, scorn families aren't that big of a deal unless, like, they start supporting, like, your pretenders and shit. Then it becomes a big deal. For now, we don't have to worry about that. And we can get some inventions. So we have some some civic power event, uh, civic power available. And this is, these are our researchers. These guys work full time on, on generating research points and researching things. And they make martial advances, civic advances, oratory advances, and religious advances. You go from level zero on up. And as you unlock certain levels, you know, there's certain inventions in the world that come about, like siege towers and, and things like that. So we have enough civic power to get one of these. And we got some pretty good ones here. Starting experience for cohorts, 5%. Uh, let's see, military tech investment, plus 5%. That would mean the martial advances uh, happen faster. It's kind of like Hearts Fire and 4 in that sense. There's a research speed. Um, standardized measures, which is national commerce income, property tax, national tax, national tribesman output. Um, let's see, proof of opinion maximum, plus 20%. Fabricate claim cost, human conduct, or humane conduct, diplomatic relation. Let's see, omen power, uh, armor recover, morale speed, technology speed. Ooh, that's pretty strong. Well, let's take a look at our income. Taxes, we make 11.61 gold per month. Commerce, we really don't make too much right now. Army maintenance is definitely expensive. Let's go and go for that herbalism, I think. The technology speed just makes everything else faster, so sounds good to me. And we can call down an omen. So there's various omens that you can call down, depending on, you know, what what type of effect you want to have in your country at a certain time. You know, there's... There's, uh, you know, Discipline, Aggressive Expansion Impact, National Commerce Income, plus 6.3%, National Manpower Modifier. I think we have enough manpower. I think we're fine. Um, national Unrest, Research Points, National Tax. We do have a deficit right now of National Tax. Perhaps going for that might be worth it. At the same time, I think also Population Growth or Research Points might be better. Um, let's go for the Research Points. Yeah. Let's go for the Research Points. Okay. Let's go for a Nation Overview. Um, so for our Nation... This is, this is the nation overview screen. Armenian, we are Armenia. This is our ruler, Armantis. And so for each different type of government form, there is like a certain set of ideas. And you can choose whatever idea you want. So for example, we have um, three idea slots here, martial, civic, and religious. And I can come in here and I can pick whatever I want. I don't have to pick a military idea here. But if you match all three slots to their appropriate category, you get a bonus in your country. You know, some sort of bonus. Looks like our bonus here, um, for matching ideas, we would get national slave output plus 10% if we, if we, um, you know, get matching ideas. So let's go and, let's go and pick some ideas here. Mal of Armies. It does cost, uh, civic power, or oratory power. Sorry. So civic power is the, yeah, is this one. Oratory power is this one. So Mal of Armies, Trivium cost, reinforce speed, I remember our recovery speed. Uh, I'll go for the Mal of Armies. Let's see if we need a civic idea. We could do build cost, build time. Wow, that is seriously good. Holy crap. Um, national commerce income plus 20% or national slave output. We do have quite a few slaves. I'm actually probably going to pick this one. And then we have religious ideas. 
Um, let's see, we can get country civilization level, monthly civilization change, loyalty of subject states, or ruler popularity gain. That's kind of a hard one. Hmm. Let's take a look. What is our civilization level? So, seems like it's mostly 40. Seems like it's mostly 40. Um, some of the interior here, like Cappadocia, Pavilonia, and Pontus, they have 25 civilization level. The higher civilization level, pretty much the, the less happy your tribes may become. But the more, like, you know, population growth you get, um, more citizen happiness, more freemen. They like to live in civilized areas. So, it's kind of interesting. Um... I don't think we need that. I don't think we need a civilization level. We don't have any subjects, so this one dumps out too much at the moment. I think really popularity gain is probably okay. Okay. Let's take a look here at our cultures. What cultures do we have? So I have to admit, I, I find the culture groups kind of weird. <clears throat> so like there's there's certain there's certain cultures over here, like Mycenaean, Frisian, Carian, Lycian, um, Assyrian, Laconian, Lycoanian. Uh, Pavlonian, Cappadocian, Pontic, Cilician. All, all those cultures are kind of just lumped into a Persian culture group. There's some evidence to suggest that these were actually kind of like their own Phrygian culture group. And, and although there was some cultural assimilation that did happen because these areas were ruled by the Achaemenids for so long. Um, it is a little strange that these are all just part of the same culture group. Now, I mean, the Albanians, Iberians, the Armenians and such, those being all kind of closer together as far as a Persian culture group makes a little more sense. But, you know. Whatever. So, uh, we're mostly Armenian. What about a religion? So, the Catholic religion, we have the Sibylline, Frisian religion over here. We have some Zoroastrian pockets, mostly. Um, let's see, we even have actually some Hellenic um, religions over here. Kind of cool. Let's see, we got an Arabic religion, we got a Chaldean religion, Canaanite Jewish religion, Arabic. We got the Kemetics over here, the Hellenics over here. So, Caldic, what is Caldic religion, actually? <clears throat> So the Caldic Pantheon re represents religion which grew out of the Eurasian or the Urdian culture many centuries before. Uh, principally polytheistic faith. The chief god was known as Caldi, who was worshipped as a warrior god. Okay. Whereas, you know, Zoroastrian is uh, the prophet Zoroaster taught of a money uh, monotheistic faith of the creator god Ahurmazda. Ahurmazda, I guess. Evolving out of the early Indo Iranian polytheism, great reverence is shown for the eternal law or Dana, which espouses good and righteous conduct. Okay. So, you know, this, this cultic religion here that we have is kind of like, um, like a pagan, pagan sort of religion. It's polytheistic, that sort of thing. And then the Zoroastrian religion is mon uh, monotheistic. So, our ruler just so happens to be Zoroastrian. So, perhaps we need to convert some stuff. We'll see. Um, let's take a look here. So, we need more citizens. Okay. So, let's go over here and promote pops. We would want to promote... Framing of citizens, which gets us commerce value, uh, commerce value and research points. Now, to do that costs, let's see, ten oratory power. Where's our capital, actually? Where's my capital? Where's my capital? I think it's here. It should be. Yeah. So this appears to be our capital, the city of uh, Amaria in Syracene. Let's go ahead and promote a couple of freemen to uh, citizens here. Okay, so we promoted five freemen into citizens, so our research points will go up only slightly. It's going to take a while. Okay. And uh, let's see, we have some armies here. So we have uh, we have two armies. Let's see. We can change the commander of one of our armies. Well, let's actually take a look. What what are our army compositions, actually? We're going to go ahead and actually kind of take a look here. So we have 7,000 heavy cavalry, 7,000 heavy infantry, and 7,000 horse archers. I have to admit, that's actually a pretty good army composition. Um, I, If anything, I actually probably want more horse archers. Eh, yeah, heavy cavalry are expensive. Hmm. As far as the commander, um, one of our best, one of our best uh, generals is actually a Pretender. Interesting. Okay, so maybe we don't want to put him in power. 
Um, another one of our good generals is the leader of the Menids family. We have another guy named Darius. All these guys are fairly loyal. Not as Zoroastrian, though. <clears throat> Let's see. And then we can also put our ruler in charge. He's not a very good general, but honestly, having the monarch lead an army or lead the army and have the loyalty of the army of the state is pretty important. So I'm actually going to go and I'll put, I'll put our commander or I'll put a ruler in charge of the, uh, of the army. Let's actually take a look. Who is going to be our successor? Looks like our... I believe this is our brother. Our brother will be our successor, and then there's a couple pretenders. So we want to make sure that we get married. Oh, we actually... Okay, so we do have we do have a wife. Um, She's actually pregnant at the moment, 19 years old. So we're going to be having a son or daughter, hopefully pretty soon. So that's good. Okay. Let's take a look here. Um, So we have the nation overview. These are all of our provinces. You know, you can sort them by name. You can sort them by... Uh, governor policy. We actually probably will want to change some of these policies, but we, we need overtory power for that. We can see who has the most citizens. We can see who has the most freemen, that sort of thing. Who's loyal, who's not loyal. We can see uh, the number of incoming trade routes. Um, so we're getting a national slave output. Let's see. Culture. Yep. Pretty much all Persian. The religion distribution. Most of our people are Kaldic, so we may need to either convert to Kaldic or quite possibly convert everybody to Zoroastrianism. And then the pop type distribution. We have a lot of tribesmen. Not that many citizens, a lot of freemen, a lot of slaves. So. And our ruler is actually, um, he's fairly popular. He's fairly popular. Let's see. He is, is not really prominent. He's not really well known. He's obviously loyal. He's got no corruption. He's just, he's, you know, he's honestly kind of mid. Like four, five, five, six. It's just, you know, it's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's not, it's not like amazing. You know, it could be better. Also for our army, we're going to take a look here. Um, there's a tactic that you can pick for each army that you have. And the tactics are either effective or ineffective against other types of tactics. So for this army composition that we have, 7,000 heavy cavalry, 7,000 horse archers, 7,000 heavy infantry. Um, a bottleneck or a shock action would be best for us. And then these ones are less effective. So we'll just keep it a shock action for now. We'll probably change this army composition a little bit. I think I would prefer to have... Maybe a little less heavy cavalry, a few more horse archers, a few more heavy infantry, and quite possibly some, some archers. Maybe some archers. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. So, I think we're just going to... I think we're going to be at peace for a bit. Let's kind of get a feeling for how things are going to progress here. Um, I do have desires to invade Trupezos. I would love to conquer uh, Pontus and Babylonia. Um, attacking Atropatine, Albania, Iberia, and Colchis would also be a good idea. But we do have to watch out for these powers here. These guys aren't really the best of friends with me. Um, if I had to pick between any of these powers, the Solicids are probably the most likely to try and declare war on us and come after us. I'm thinking. Let's see, we're in neutral stance right now, as far as our, um... Yeah, we're in neutral stance. We're actually on the same, yeah, we're actually the same power as, like... You know, Phrygia, the Solicit Empire, we're, we're all major powers. So, and major powers cannot have allies. So we should, um, at the very least, make people less likely to declare war on us. So we're just going to let some time pass. Um, let's actually take a look at our score. Our score is pretty ass. We're number 49 for score. Just because our, our people and, and, you know, there's a lot of, um, are our people happy? Let's actually take a look. Yeah, most, most of our people are happy. Um... There's a lot that needs to be done. Um, there's a lot that needs to happen. Okay. So likely these, these successor kingdoms will go to war with each other. We're going to want to, you know, build up our, our armed forces and kind of look for opportunities to, um, to become more powerful for ourselves. You know, maybe I should reorganize this now. Mm, we have a little bit of money. Let's actually go ahead. We might want to build some stuff here. So we can build marketplaces, training camps, fortresses, and granaries. Granny has been help us out with uh, with population growth. Let's see, I do kind of like a marketplace here. Um, I wouldn't mind some fortresses actually in these mountainous provinces. So there's a lot of hills. Hills is pretty much like you know mountains in in like U4. So, like, for example, we, so we have impassable terrain here. 
as well as like here. There's some impassable terrain here. Like, I don't know. I, I kind of have a feeling like, unless we're going to invade. Let's see. Oh, okay. So Albania and Atropatine have, uh, have an alliance. That's interesting. Like I said, I'd actually wouldn't mind getting a, you know, getting a claim on Atropatine and coming after him. Would actually be pretty useful. Um, what type of goods does he have? Got some good stuff here. He's got honey. He's got green. A lot of good stuff. I wouldn't mind attacking him. We'll consider it. Um, like I said, though, I do think quite possibly we're going to need maybe need some forts out here. Like, if I had a fort like in Karen. If I had a fort in Karen. You know, just, just to kind of block the mountain passes from advances. I don't know, that would make me feel more comfortable. Oh, so there are mountain provinces. Okay, so there are mountains here. So most of this is hills, but there are mountains as well. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. You know, actually, I think I will stay with the marketplaces for now. All right, that or granary. Yeah, I'll get a granary. Why not? Let's see. National sleeve output. I, I'm kind of thinking, actually, maybe I should have gone for the standard uh, construction, build cost, and build time. He's pretty strong. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Perhaps we will actually have to do that. Okay. So let's just be at peace for a while. Get some more manpower. Yeah, as far as as far as attacking people, I would maybe like to attack Albania and Iberia. Probably would not be too bad of an idea. Take some attrition here, apparently. Okay. All right, let's see what's going on. What else is going on in the world? So we got the Romans. Let's see, we got Macedon. Macedon is allied to Thrace. There's out of Macedon. He's got a trouble vassal of Drissia. Phrygia has got just tons of subjects. Tons of subjects. All this good stuff over here. I think I will improve relations with Phrygia. Maybe the Seleucids as well. It's probably not a bad idea. Actually, perhaps the Seleucids first. What's going on here? Uh, following people support one of the pretenders. Patina Sassanid supports supports pretender. That's not good. Okay. Oratory power. Hmm. Uh, daughter has been born to our ruler. Okay. Got it. Okay, so we got a couple pretenders that um, will eventually become disloyal. Yeah. This guy's the most supporters, though. Our main heir, who's our brother. My knowledge. Um, is he is he our brother or our heir? Or our son? Petitioner approaches. A strapping young adult by the name of Masasas Deus had approached our Zayathea in private this morning. In a hushed voice, he spoke of a vision of the new future in which he was found by his loved ones, having been struck by divine lightning. With shaking hands, he offered all his worldly goods to the state in return for our protection. Hmm. I don't really need the money. I'll take the oratory power. Is this guy maybe our cousin? I'm not sure who he is. <laughs> hmm. I think he actually might be like a cousin. Huh. Interesting. 
Let's see. Trapezus wants to import wine from uh, the province of Tar Tarwin. That's a league with Faces. Faces? Who's that? Oh, this guy. Oh. Okay. Um, we will earn 0 0.43 gold per month. Okay, fine. Hmm. How strong are you guys? So Albania is actually pretty strong. He's got 23,000, or he's got 23,000 men, 23 cohorts. Iberia is really weak. Only five cohorts. Colchis has eight cohorts. And Colchis would give us connection to the sea. So I'm actually kind of inclined to maybe declare a war on him. How many fortresses does he have? Like two. Yeah, like two. No. Uh, Rontus the assertive. Always quick to come up with the bright ideas, clever solutions, and cunning plans. Rontus is regarded as one of the greatest minds of his generation. Okay. Let's see. This guy's at war with Sarasia. Okay, so the, so the Sarasians declare war on Colchis. Perhaps we should do the same. We can fabricate a claim at 200 power. Or we move over to a um, a change of diplomatic stance into a bellicose stance, which would guess the fabricate claim cost minus 10%. We can also use this aggressive protection here. Sometimes the only excuse we need is that we're the only ones who can truly offer security. Okay, claim costs. Sure. I think we should reorganize this army maybe a little bit. I think we'll grab some archers. We'll grab some archers. The horse archers are also pretty good. Archers against um, other light infantry. Well, actually, I don't know if we'll be facing off against a lot of light infantry, right? Um... Searches cataphracts. It's kind of a hard question. Hmm. I actually wouldn't mind wouldn't mind having some um, some light cover running around. That probably is not a bad idea. We do have some issues with it with supply out here though. Like like we can invade Colchis pretty fast, but there's some issues with um, with supply. Hmm. We have a lot of manpower, but you don't exactly want to burn all your manpower too fast. Manpower re replenishes only uh, every 30 years. So right now our maximum is 77,000. If we were to drain that from zero, or if we were to drain our 77,000 manpower to zero, it would take 30 years to replenish fully. So as you can tell, that would be kind of bad. We did. Tripatine is only with Albania. Um, Looks like Babylonia has been declared on by Frisia. So Pontus and Pavlonia are at war with Phrygia. Attacking Pontus would be pretty useful. Pontus is a settled tribe. How strong is he? He's actually got 25 cohorts. It's not bad. Hmm. It's like Pontus or Colchis? Can invade Trapezus. I think we'll invade Trapezus after we conquer Colchis. Let's go and split these armies. Let's move them over here to the border. Just kind of slowly. Yeah, this, um... This attrition could be a problem.
Let's see. One citizen converts to Zoroastrianism. We do have a bit of religious power. Let's actually go and convert a couple of people to Zoroastrian. So the thing is, is the happier your citizens are, the more like research and stuff that you get. This guy's a pretty good general. Low to gain chance. This guy's a pretender. We do not want to give him command of an army, even though he's a good general. He's a good general. This guy's this guy's loyal. Yeah, his loyalty is pretty good. Loyalty gain chance. There is a chance that these cohorts become loyal to him. Many cohorts. Yeah. National tax, national tribesman output. What about some more money? National tax might might be good. Um, some more military tech advance, um, investment would also be good. Oh, whoopsies. <laughs> I picked the wrong one. I accidentally picked the uh, stirring experience. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so a whole lot of people declared war on uh, on Colchis. So let's go and fabricate a claim here and let's probably invade. Because I, I do want to get access to the sea. I do want to get access to the sea. There's no fortresses here. Okay, so we can declare on the 10th of August. Mission approaches. Wow, the same event. Uh, I'll take the Oratory Power. Yeah, I'll take the Oratory Power. Because that's, I mean, we don't really generate that much Oratory Power per month, so. Ooh! Really? That's actually super convenient. Colchis is allied to Trapezus. We will be able to annex Trapezus as well in this war. Good deal. Um, our ruler just gave birth to a daughter. Sexually improve relations with the solicits while we can. Okay, so we're gonna declare a war here. Let's take this port. Trapezes actually has two forts. Two forts. So our siege day ticks. 40 day siege ticks. Ugh. It's kind of bad. These guys are obviously a Lenic. The Kulkis is an autocratic monarchy, but he's probably got... Yeah, his troops probably aren't that great. Oh, wow. We actually captured somebody. Huh. Let's see. Okay, see, so we got to take all of this in order to annex it. We'll let him do his thing. Can we actually move to... We actually could. Okay, we'll start that siege as well. Cappadocian throne. Years ago, the Macedonian general Eumenes took over the kingdom of Cappadocia from its native dynast, the Persian satrap Ariathus I. Since that time, Ariathus' heir and nephew, also named Ariath... Um, Ari... Ariathes? Oh, okay. Ariathes. Ariathes. Oh, no, it's weird. Um, since that time, Arethes, heir and nephew, also named Arethes, has been in our custody. Eumenes has since died and left Cappadocia to Antigonus of Phrygia, who has placed the region under the control of the Macedonian satrap Amentus. Amentus now stands alone and forgotten as Antigonus battles the other successor kingdoms in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Has the time come to send Arethes back to Cappadocia? So Cappadocia would get mad at me. I mean, Cappadocia, to be fair, is a satrap of the Frisians. It's a satrapy. There's a hundred military power for that? Uh, yeah, sure, we'll send his ass back. I'm not really sure it matters that much. Not really too sure it matters. Um, Colchis is actually wanting to give us peace. Uh, ooh, we need a new governor. Let's see, who would be a good governor? Artaxius Deison? Ugh, don't want him. This guy's obsessive. Nope. Darius Menin? He's a founder, local citizen, output of governor? Uh, okay. I'll pick him. Sure.
Yeah, 40 days siege ticks. It's kind of painful. Ouch. Ooh, what's going on here? Hmm, this is forest. He's got archers and light infantry. Uh-oh. There's quite a few troops around here. Hmm. Oh, okay, so we can actually link up these armies together. All right, let's do that. Yeah, we take we take some attrition, but um, it's probably not a bad idea because there's a lot of troops kind of running around here. Although the Kulkis, yeah, Kulkis just got no battle with these guys. Yeah, don't want don't want this army in command of him. Well, I mean, I guess we could, but he's a really good general. All right, for now we'll keep him in charge. That's fine. Taking a bit of attrition here. Misos wants to want to access. Sure, why not? Uh, liberation. The city of Canopolis uh, have taken it upon themselves a free accessible quantity of privately owned slaves. For freedom. I guess I could actually put this guy in charge. Let's actually go move this army out of here so we don't take as much attrition. Just making plenty of money. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. I think I'm gonna go for military tech investment though. Trapezus is my main concern right now. Don't mind so much about this. I want Trapezus. Okay, there we go. Looks like Sarasia took um, a lot of this. How the hell do faces join this war? That's interesting. I don't know. Let's go see if we can attack this army. Um, Colchis is... Is Colchis Hellenic? No. Although it, it does look like they do have hoplites here. It's kind of interesting. Let's see if we've got some unused trade routes. What are we missing? Mini Manor, we're getting that earthenware. Extra Empire modifier from that grain. Let's see. He might try to attack me here, I'm guessing. Looks like that's what he wants to do. We'll take the battle. We'll see how it goes. Terrain is in his favor. Um, our commander does have pretty decent skill. Oh, no. We wrecked that guy. Wow. So in order to create new trade routes, you do need to have a certain amount of civic power. So... Let's see. What would go good for us? Cloth... I think that's what we were importing before. We can actually import cloth from the solicits, so we'll do that. Ok, 
Okay, so there's a lot of war going on. Pontus wants to import wine. I'm going to climb that. I think we actually might probably attack him. Um, yeah, we might attack him. Probably not a bad idea. Let's go to speed five for a bit. Playing on playing on speed five in this game is is sometimes kind of the better way to play. Ooh, guided by a Hermazda. I like the Mal of Armies, ten percent sounds good. Oh yeah, damn. Oh, you little bastard! He's got military access to Iberia. Piece of shit. Motherfucker! He's moving through Iberia now. Hmm. Dude, seriously, that that siege is taking forever. Uh, let's hit that national text point fire. Here we go. Okay, so can I super piece, please? Can you give me these? Yeah! 42 war score. Only gives us 8 aggressive expansion. And we get all this. Take it. See, we can gain popularity, but we already have 100, or we can lose some aggressive expansion. I think I'll just do that. It's probably fine. We should attack the Pontix here. Little cohorts, commanded cohorts. Hmm. My commander in charge of this army. What this guy? I guess pretty loyal. Okay, so we need two new governors. Because we just conquered these places. Who would be a good governor? Sure. Escort family. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do. Just because we are actually in perfect relations with people right now, I'm actually gonna go and take this. See, Frisia dislikes me because of aggressive expansion, but we are improving relations with him. Kind of the same deal with the, um... Kind of the same deal with, um... Solicid. They're gonna dislike me. This is Solicid's Nikita Solicid. So we got Antigonus, the One-Eyed. He's 84 years old over here. Egypt is still under uh, Ptolemy Soter Lagid. Renovations, release the funds. Let's see. Abarsus Menin in civic capacity informs us he has an opportunity that an opportunity has arisen. We will do it. We will take the opportunity. Jesus Christ, man. Our our supply really is ass out here. Our supply just sucks. Holy shit, we're still taking nutrition too. Wow. Okay. Let's take a quick look at our provinces. Um, most of these provinces just want acquisition of wealth, which is fine. Let's change this one maybe to religious conversion would convert people to Zoroastrianism. I think civilization effort. Yeah. Uh, 
You know, Borderlands probably isn't bad. Borderlands gets us min power. I'm actually gonna go ahead and meow. Yeah. I'm gonna swap a couple of these to Borderlands. So Borderlands gets us land, local manpower and local fort defense. Acquisition of wealth just gets us straight up money. Um, we do want to eventually focus on converting a lot of this to Zoroastrianism. It's not like the most necessary thing to do in the world, but it, it's helpful. Over time, it's a helpful thing to do. Okay. Holy shit, how are you still taking a shit here? Damn. Let's see, the Bontics, they have heavy infantry, light infantry, archers. Interesting. Okay. There's some starving pops here. Let's build ourselves a granary over here then. Still could use more citizens. There we go. Let's go. Yeah, it's, you know, it's helping out with the research rate. Still, our research rate's gonna take some time to kind of get up there. We're not exactly the most educated place in the world. Egypt is trying to move after Cyrenaica. The Solicids are a war with Parnia, actually. Over here. Amisos wants... Base Metals. Yeah, I'll give it to him. Yeah, so winter attrition out here is pretty bad. Winter attrition is quite painful. Ugh. more granaries going. We do a lot of structures that we need to build. Um, you know, building buildings is really one of the things that, you know, just, it's it's one of those things over time that is going to help you. Building structures, it just, it, it's sometimes in like the short term, it might not seem like the most immediate benefit in the world, but it is a good thing to do. <clears throat> so, so Western Armenians, of expansion goes down, country civilization level. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break here, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I hope you guys are excited for Imperator of Rome, as I am. Hope I've tried to explain enough about the game, you know, to, that you guys can get a sense of what's going on. And uh, we'll see what else we do in the future. I'm hoping to conquer a lot, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Tripatine is yet to be attacked by solicits. Hmm. He's very wealthy. 408 pops, that's a lot. We'll see. And he's actually got some Zoroastrian Armenians we need to make liberate. So we'll see about that. Thank you so much for watching as always, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.